out from the from the Arnold so I want to welcome everyone to branch one week here at the MD website hope you guys enjoy it um, got a lot of things going on especially coming up for the next year uh, primary my primary focus right now is getting ready for the 2011 Arnold Classic um, last year I had the privilege of a uh, guest hosting at the Emerald Cup there in the spring and um, my friend Dark Mark Dugdo and his wife um, they contacted me and uh, we had spent some time with them the previous year in Sweden and I uh, got to become friends with him and his wife Christina and uh, just two great individuals and great people and um, he was filming, filming a, new D a new DVD called Legacy and um, it was about bodybuilding but it's also about what's your legacy as a man going to be because as a man you have a great influence on your family and um, you know especially if you have children uh, you have a huge influence on the people that they, uh, they grow up to be and um, so he had, um, I'd, very few people know my story as a child growing up, and um, I had shared some of that with him uh, when I was in Sweden with him. So he, he contacted me and uh, asked if I'd be willing to uh, come and speak to a prison and a group of pris prisoners there. His, um, his pastor is, uh, also has a prison ministry, and uh, so that was his, uh, his connection with, to, to get into the prison so we could speak to these guys, and I told him, of course I would, and I'd love to. And... Um, so I kind of went, I agreed to go and share my testimony and uh, how I grew up as a kid and uh, how bodybuilding changed my life and um, also how, you know, becoming a Christian changed my life for the better. And uh, so we went to Monroe, Monroe State Prison there outside of Seattle. Me and Mark and uh, his pastor and uh, we walk in, of course, they do a thorough security, they do a background check on you before you ever, ever get there. And uh, then you get there, and of course, the security is very tight. Uh, you know, you basically, they pat you down, metal detector, and go through a metal detector and all kinds of other stuff. And then they uh, tell you about all the rules you got to follow when you're there. So once you get inside the, actually get inside the prison, uh, that door slams behind you. And man, that was uh, not a good feeling. I'm walking, walking through the cell blocks and uh, seeing these guys locked up like animals, man. And uh, I mean, they're entire, they have no freedom, man. They're told when they shower, they're told when they eat, they're told when. They get to leave their cell, and the majority of the day they spend, spend locked up in a little bitty cell. So um, I think every young man needs to, needs to have that experience to see what it's like to, to be locked up because there's, a, there's always consequences to your actions, and if you do the wrong thing, there's a high likelihood you'll end up there. And um, uh, for me, it was the uh, first time I'd ever been in a prison, and um, thank God. And, um, but it was one of the best... Uh, experiences I've ever had for, for I, I, I don't know um, I hope it was um, sharing my story my testimony with the prisoners there was uh, going to be a good thing for them but I know it was a good thing for me so we get to the uh, where we're going to have the prison meeting in the uh, gymnasium there <clears throat> they actually had a really good uh, set of weights and weight equipment there and um, you know with lifting weights was a privilege so if they didn't have good conduct and good behavior they couldn't lift weights and uh, I found out later just how important that was to them they uh have a very limited amount of time when they can't exercise and you know they value weightlifting the guys we spoke to tremendously uh one guy had been locked up there for 21 years and he told me man he said lifting weights is all i got he said if they told me i couldn't lift weights he goes man i would have no reason to continue on he goes that's all i have and i said man i go uh this guy was you know probably in his 40s early 40s and i said man i said when are you getting out he said i'm not he goes i'll die here I'm thinking, man, that might be another 40, 50 years locked up in here, man. So um, I didn't ask him what he did, but uh, I'm sure it was uh, something pretty bad to justify a, 
a life sentence like that. <clears throat> but, um, you know, we spoke to a lot of guys, and I asked the guards, I said, what kind of guys are we dealing with here? He said, you'll be dealing with murderers, uh, a lot of sex offenders, you know, and just hearing the word sex offender, you know, and pedophile, uh, it automatically uh, turned my stomach. You know, Mark II, and we looked at each other, and, um, you know, I, I look at it, someone like that as the worst of the worst, you know, who would hurt a, hurt a child, you know, and do unspeakable things to him. But, uh, you know, after talking to him, a lot of those guys, uh, a lot of those guys, they deserve to be there. You could see in their eyes, they were where they needed to be. Some of those guys, they were young guys, they'd made stupid mistakes, and they'll get out in a couple years, and good chance they'll uh, take the right path and going to be productive citizens. So um, I share my testimony with them. Um, I, think I, I looked into the audience as I was giving my testimony, and I saw a lot of a couple of these guys that were, you know, tattooed up, hard-looking guys. Man, they were crying, had tears in their eyes. So uh, I think I did reach some people with my, my personal story and my journey to get where I'm at. And um, you know, Mark shared his story, and uh, I think it was a, uh, a very good experience for myself. You know, usually. Uh, a lot of years uh, after the Arnold, the Olympia, I'll take a couple weeks off and uh, kind of rest. Uh, this year I didn't. As soon as uh, I touched down back in Dallas from the Olympia, uh, I went to the gym and started training again. Um, obviously, I backed down the intensity and the weight a little bit, but um, I didn't take any time off. Um, and I kept on training. Um, you know, people say, well, what's the reason behind that? I just uh, didn't want to take any time off, man. Um, you know, you, you get so close to your ultimate goal, and uh, I didn't want to take any time off. And... Um, you know, at this point in time, I think I feel I feel much worse when I don't train. So, uh, you know, I actually feel better physically and mentally when I do train. And, you know, I love to work out. So uh, I didn't take any time off. And I think that might have helped me stay a little bit leaner, too. Uh, I, I started preparing for this Arnold Classic. And, um, you know, when I sent George the pictures when I was, I don't know, 13, 14 weeks out, you know, he commented that I was the leanest I'd ever been, you know, being this far out. And uh, my body weight was, uh, you know, pretty good, too. So, uh, I think uh, not taking any time off, and I've stayed pretty much on my diet, man. Off, well, you, it's an off-season diet, but you know, I didn't didn't stray too much from the plan George gave me for the off-season. So, uh, you know, I never do really. But uh, I think the biggest thing was I didn't take any time off. So I had, a, I had I'm starting from the best place I've ever started f from before. Uh, you know, preparing for a big contest. You know, I get a lot of questions. Uh, you know, comparing me to Dorian Yates, and, uh, you know, I get asked a lot if I've ever tried the one set to failure, you know, per exercise style of training that he did. And, uh, yes, I did try that for a while. Uh, no, it worked, but quite frankly, it just wasn't enough for me. I mean, the workouts were so short, and, um, you know, they're super intense, but my workouts were already super intense, so um, I like to train. And, uh, you know, I don't mind doing multiple sets, man. Uh, you know, I don't mind taking two or three sets of an exercise to failure. And uh, it works for me, so, you know, if I, if I stop exercise before I, and I still have two or three reps left, then I just cheated myself. So, man, I push myself to failure on everything I do, no matter how many sets or exercises I do. So um, they can take all that pussy style of training and keep it to themselves. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, next episode is going to be uh, arm training, biceps and triceps. I um, want to thank everyone for tuning in this week for Branch One Week. And uh, I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Team Muscle Tech, uh, Team MD, and of course, GASP. And uh, God bless you, and I'll see you in nine and a half weeks.